I want to thank uh, Finance Watch, uh, who followed the whole dossier from the early beginning uh, till now, and uh, I think will follow the negotiation procedure in the next uh, month as well, and the implementation procedure, as uh, MIFID and MIFID gives a lot of uh, possibilities in kind of uh, delegated acts and uh, technical standards for the European Commission and for the relevant authority, which is ESMA, uh, in the MIFID MIFIR case. And uh, therefore, I think to follow and uh, to watch all those uh, things in the coming year. And if you look to the working program of ESMA for 2013, MIFID is one of the key points uh, of the work uh, of ESMA. It is necessary to follow that as well. And I want to thank all those at Finance Watch who are uh, doing this important work uh, for their support and the possibility to assist the Parliament that nothing uh, is without taking care, which is normally necessary, not only if Commission does things, but as well if ESMA does things. I appreciate the cooperation we had in the European Parliament in the last month. It was a long time of negotiations between the various groups, and I saw uh, there was really a mood to come to common conclusions and to be together as much as possible, uh, to be strong in the negotiations, because what we really want to have, and that is, uh, I can fully agree, to uh, bring financial services and financial markets back to that why they have been created, which is to fulfill an obligation for the real economy and to bring them back to that is one of the key issues I think we have to do. Financial markets are not an issue by itself. It is a service for the real economy. And if we can link to that, I think we are on a good way. Only to give you the, the figures, uh, what we had to work on, uh, it was a huge amount of amendments I had to deal with in the past months. Uh, 824 for MIFID, 1,321 for MIFID. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, 100 less than uh, we had on CRD4, but uh, <laughs> in, in the same, yeah, uh, only, only number two, but uh, in the same scope, uh, which shows the importance of this piece of legislation and the complexity of this piece of legislation. There's a lot of things are addressed and I will concentrate only on a few key aspects of the proposal. The first thing I think is the question on market structure. That was uh, from the early beginning till now one of the key points. Is there a need of introducing a new category of uh, trading facilities in comparison to what has been established by MIFID 1? And after a long discussion and uh, if you look back where we came from, the famous Swinburne report on uh, dark pools trading where the Parliament said no additional facility is needed. Uh, we have now agreed that there is a need for a so-called organized trading facility, though the Commission worked very hard to convince us and achieved it at the end of the day. Now it was not only Commission, but to take a look on the market structures and to bring all trades inside the MIFID world, which was one of our main aims, I think there is a need to have an additional category. And that's why we discussed from the early beginning the advantages, disadvantages of this new uh, organized trading facility. And uh, <coughs> I think we have found now a good compromise, which says yes to OTF, but this famous yes, but, uh, restrictive uh, for uh, various products and uh, especially on uh, how it is used. I think the main difference is that for OTFs there's a degree of discretion over how a transaction should be executed and that has to be accepted. As we have a discretionary approach on a market where transparency <coughs> should be allowed for whole uh, fair uh, price building process. But so I think it is important that we avoid the creation of new loopholes and therefore I think the idea is to change three things in the current proposal. Firstly, limiting the OTF category to non-equities, not allowing proprietary trading so that uh, the firm's own money can't be used for trading and reviewing it in due time, uh, whether it's functioning or proper functioning or has to be readjusted and then there are the three key elements uh, we put in for OTF. I know that the Commission is not quite happy. <laughs> I had yesterday the chance to discuss that. 
and I know that in the Council they have the same kind of discussion, not concluded till today, so we can conclude very quickly if they follow the Parliament's advice and we will have longer negotiations if they don't, so we will see uh, what is going to happen. I think what is, is in, on importance as well, uh, that for the whole uh, area on OTC derivatives, uh, we try to introduce if they are traded, that they are traded inside the MIFID world. And if they are not traded on regulated markets, multi multilateral trading facility or organized trading facility, to bring them through an SI, which is uh, already foreseen in MIFID 1, um, is a serious approach that one of those <coughs> venues is used for trading any financial instruments. And that is uh, the main rule from the European Parliament for the whole market structure. Whatever happens if a financial paper is traded, it has to be inside the MIFID world and not outside. The second point already mentioned uh, as well, high frequency trading. That is one of those new developments which was not foreseen in MIFID 1, but not because no one knew, be but because it was a new development. So I think regulator has to take care on that. Algorithm trading and high frequency trading. And a few months ago I was in Brussels at another place uh, in a conference and I've been asked to Mr. Ferber, do you want to delete the computers uh, from the trading venues? Of course I will not. I'm an electrical engineer and I know all the advantages of computers. But the question is whether everything which is possible with new techniques should be allowed. And I think that is the approach uh, in the Commission proposal and in the proposal we have now agreed on that, of course, algorithm trading, high frequency trading is possible and it should be allowed if it creates advantages, but it should be regulated that it does not create disadvantages. So I think the first uh, thing uh, to be discussed is uh, placement of circuit breakers. Even the United States have, after the famous uh, flash crash, introduced a system like that. So I think that is a common approach, that you have, have to have technical standards which avoid that the algorithm are in a self-destructive uh, way uh, formulated and uh, disturb the whole system and create something which has nothing to do with real economy. And therefore, I think circuit breakers are a serious approach and that is uh, one of the key elements in our legislation. The second thing is uh, this uh, minimum resting period, which has already been mentioned. I know that is one of those uh, things uh, which is something like faith, you believe in it or not. Uh, <laughs> so I always say for belief, uh, the churches are responsible and not the European legislator. But if you want to avoid that for the moment more than 90% of the orders placed in high frequency trading are withdrawn before execution. You have to think on whether a minimum holding period makes sense or not. I'm open for every, every kind of uh, um, slowing down uh, this uh, thing if uh, other ideas are on the table. I appreciate that but I think we want to throw a stone in the sea and uh, that is what the Parliament accepted, to have a minimum resting period of famous 500 milliseconds. Um, the average placement for the moment is 5 milliseconds and maybe that gives you a thinking of how we calculated 500. It's 5 multiplied with 100. Yeah? It's easy to understand and that is a kind of security mechanism. But I'm open for everything. I could compromise on 492 as well. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, I will think on that. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, if you look uh, on the MAD, which has been introduced already, and MAR, we have to take care that with uh, high frequency uh, trading, you have possibilities to influence the price building process by placing orders without execution them, uh, executing them. And on the other hand, you have to ask yourself, what is the economical benefit outside of providing liquidity, which is for sure. But what is the economical impact of this provided liquidity if most of the, according to studies I have on my desk, uh, most of high frequency traders <coughs> want to leave the marketplace in the evening only with money, but not with shares. 
So the economical impact is that uh, they try to jump in in orders which are really taking place and try to benefit out of that and the addition uh, liquidity is only disturbing or can disturb, it's not only this, it can disturb a fair price building process and that's why I think it makes sense uh, to take influence on that. For that uh, I think a tick size regime makes sense, that is the next uh, point in our proposal. Um, which is uh, discussed this commission, which is discussed with ESMA and I think that is one of those key elements because uh, tick size regime means that you can't uh, jump in the one thousands or one ten thousands or one hundred thousands of a cent uh, of a euro cent uh, in, in, the, uh, in the value of a financial paper and uh, with this uh, tick size regime all these algorithms uh, come to a limitation itself and that is uh, the same as a minimum holding period. So that are the, the same approaches by various, uh, by different uh, uh, things, uh, but it means the same. What we are asking as well is that algorithms have to be tested in the forehand. I think that is on importance as well, that they are not disturbing the trading venue or creating problems, technical problems or, or, or um, uh, software problems on the uh, uh, systems and the yeah. Authorities, ESMA or national authorities, have to have the right to look inside the algorithms, not to make the algorithm public, but the uh, surveillance authorities have to have the right to take a look on that, and I think that is of importance as well. And the last thing is the fee structure, where I think um, everything which has a price uh, is uh, a market driven procedure, as prices are uh, defining what's happening on the market. And if you give, give rebates, uh, you are taking influence. If you give additional fees, you are influencing as well. So for the moment, we have more rebates, but maybe it makes sense if you have a higher ratio of uh, withdrawn uh, uh, orders before execution, that this kind of strategy is uh, reduced and makes uh, then less uh, problems in a fair price building process. The last thing I want to mention is commodities, position limits, which has been mentioned as well, which becomes more and more important not only in 2008 when we saw the high volatility, especially in the food market and the food derivatives market. Um, I was at this time in Chicago and tried to understand what's uh, happening there and I think we have a huge responsibility that of the one hand uh, food derivatives are functioning, we need it. But on the other hand, we are not creating too much volatility, which uh, is disturbing the market in a way that at the end, people in the third and fourth world uh, do not have enough to eat. And in 2008, the European Union had to spend th more than 100 million euros for food aid programs, not because there was a, a, a bad harvesting, but because there was such a high speculation that people could not afford. And I think that is uh, something where we should uh, take into account. If you have market influence by bad weather conditions, whatever, that's normal. What we see for the moment uh, in the wheat market as in the United States, the harvesting of 2012 is less than foreseen. But uh, if you have these problems, although the products are available on the markets and people have hunger and are dying for hunger, then I think you need regulation on that. That's why we make a very strong regime developing what commission has proposed uh, with a, commission, a position limit and a position check system and the main difference is who has no interest in a product falls under the position limit system, who has interesting interest on a product falls under the position check system because even those who have interest in the product can speculate. And that's why you can't say they are clean and do not fall under any regulation. And I think therefore our system is a development of the proposals of the Commission and we are happy to negotiate that. We are following very closely what is foreseen for the moment in the United States and I think it makes sense as for the moment uh, Chicago is a leading market uh, for this kind of product. And uh, I don't think that it makes sense that we are disturbing all developments in the European Union. But if we have a good kind of cooperation, we have uh, possibilities for Europe as well. 
because what I want to avoid as rapporteur in the European Parliament is that we have strong regulation, but then in the end all the trading is outside the European Union. Then we have won nothing. And uh, therefore I think it makes sense to follow that experience uh, very closely. And I'm very happy that CTFC uh, gave us uh, good advice and uh, we take, took a lot on those ideas on board. To conclude, to sum up, I think uh, what we have achieved in the committee is quite well. We have to do some technical adjustments. Uh, that's why I appreciate to go to the plenary. As I saw the uh, documentation for today, of course we will speak about the consumer protection again uh, before the plenary vote as that is one of the key issues I learned now that MIFID has nothing to do with markets, only with consumer protection, but uh, that are all the lessons one has to learn. We will um, have the discussion on the 25th uh, of October and on Friday we will have the, f the vote in, in the plenary in Strasbourg and then we are waiting uh, whatever the council is doing. Uh, I I'm in uh, contact with the Cypriotic Presidency and um, gave them the advice to be as close as possible to the Parliament so we can even, <laughs> so we can even finalize this year. <laughs> but they are not yet so convinced, so if you can assist me on that, uh, I will appreciate that. But seriously, I think uh, to have a, a common position during the Cyprus Presidency and then to have uh, hard stuff negotiations in the beginning of Irish presidency, as other things are on the table as well as banking union where we have some kind of time pressure and other issues. Uh, it makes sense that we finalize this important piece of legislation as we have the commitment of G20, as I think we as Europeans should show that we are able to fulfill our commitments in comparison to other markets and, and this is my last word, to give an example especially to the Asian world who is very re reluctant for the moment in uh, fulfilling G20 obligations, watching what Europe, watching what United States is doing. And uh, if we give a good example of a good, serious, balanced legislation, I think that can be the blueprint for the Asian markets and it would be a huge advantage for the European Union to be a serious partner in the financial world for all the investors of the world and I think that is what our economy needs. Thank you very much.